I want to welcome the hundreds of directors of Hebrew schools and the directors of various Jewish schools across the U.S. and the world who are now introducing into your schools the amazing, incredible program of Tzivis Hashem, the Army of Hashem, the organization founded by the Rebbe at the end of 1980, Tovshin Mem Aleph. There is a letter that may have been part of the curriculum, I'm not sure, but it's worthy to study this letter. It's a letter the Rebbe wrote to somebody on the 26th of Tevis, 5742. Chavav Tevis Tavshin or January 21st, 1982. This is a letter written, it's a long letter in English, written to somebody who was obviously involved in education, deeply involved in education. Somebody who was also a public activist and who cared about Yiddishkeit, he cared about Judaism. And he protested to the Rebbe that despite the fact that he appreciates a lot of the work of Chabad Lubavitch around the world, he feels that it was erroneous to create an organization, Sivis Hashem, which focuses on militarism. And in an age of violence and in an age of war and conflict and crime, it's so unhealthy and it's not pedagogical and educational to inculcate within innocent children ideas connected to armies and commanders and wars and platoons and grenades and bullets and guns, which all smack with aggression and violence and bloodshed and conflict and war. On the contrary, we want to teach the youth to become faithful, loyal citizens dedicated to build societies based on camaraderie and peace and coexistence and tolerance and respect. The antithesis of war. Why would the Rebbe then create an organization that the focus is Tzivis Hashem, we're soldiers in an army, we're fighting an enemy, we're fighting the Sahara. God is our commander-in-chief, our weapons are Torah, mitzvahs. You want to educate children? Find other methods, find other allegories. This was the question that this man raised to the Rebbe. I didn't see his letter, but the Rebbe responds to all these questions, so it's obvious that these were his question. this was his question. The Rebbe writes to him a very elaborate, ex- self-explanatory, lengthy, respectful, and really beautiful, beautiful letter. Interestingly, pointing out that he did not create this organization in a vacuum. It came after much deliberation and much thought. He said, I have thought long and hard about the problems that he addresses. And only then did he come to the conclusion that Sivis Hashem can really serve as a powerful answer to these challenges and problems that American youth and youth in other countries, Jews and non-Jews, are enduring and going through. I would suggest all of you to learn this letter well. And not just learn it at the surface, there's a lot of layers of it. The Rebbe's letters in general were written very briefly. Even long letters, like this one, it's still very brief. The Rebbe would contain a lot, he would compress a lot in a single sentence. And often, people read it and they don't really get it. They get one point, but they don't get every line. Every line and word is meticulous, is precise. The Rebbe dictated it. It was written by one of the secretaries, probably Dr. Mendel, and then reviewed by the Rebbe, sometimes once, sometimes twice, after the, the, the secretary typed it out. But nonetheless, there's a lot there, and every line, every word is adding something. And it's often easy, the English is also sometimes a little difficult and a little bit of a classic old English so it's also hard always to decipher, it's always sometimes hard to decipher all of the nuances. But these are letters that deserve to be studied and delved into. Hafachba, Vafachba, the Kulaba, because there's a, I'm telling you, there's a tremendous amount contained there about chinuch, about pedagogy, about education, about schools, most importantly, about our youth, our children, and Sivis Hashem. What I want to do now today, in the next 10 minutes or so, is 10, 15 minutes, is bring out three of the major points that the Rebbe says in this letter. There are other points, especially the beginning of the letter, which I'm not addressing. But three of the major points, I want to bring out a little bit of my own words, the way I understood the letter, because I think that they give us a lot of perspective in the purpose of Tzivis Hashem, 
the functionality of Tzivas Hashem, the benefits of Tzivas Hashem, and the tremendous value that the Rebbe felt Tzivas Hashem can have for a new generation of Jewish youths throughout the whole world, including Eretz Yisrael and America and the rest of the world, as he points out in the letter, and as he discussed in the Sichas, during the public Fabrengans that the Rebbe spoke about during that time when he founded Tzivas Hashem, but of course this letter is different because the Sichas were spoken, so to speak, with a very Torah language, the language of Sichas. This letter is written in a more, I don't know if the word is, uh, it, it, it's written in an English style and therefore addresses more of a secular audience. The Isis the Rebbe uses, the terminology he uses, the examples he uses, and one of the main points he makes. And that's, I think, its value. Three of the many points of this letter. Point number one. The Rebbe says that he has seen for a while a breakdown in the concept which we call Kabbalah's El Malchus Shemaya. The American youth is filled with cockiness and self-assertiveness. We live in a democracy. Everything is about me, me, me. I decide my future. I decide everything about my life. And the whole concept of submission to parents, to your own father, mother, grandparents, community, teachers, even the law, he says, has become very, very weakened. Uh, Civility has been compromised. Law enforcement has been very compromised. He says he's not going to get into the reasons. Everybody could guess what he was talking about or speculate. He doesn't want to get into it, why law enforcement has become so weak in America. But the bottom line is that between law enforcement being so weak, children not wanting to submit, and parents not wanting to fight, and they don't want to be tough. So he says parents abdicated their own authority. They're not parenting anymore. They're too weak. They don't want to have that, that power, that confidence. So they let the children decide what they want. A very powerful idea that parents have abdicated their responsibility. The Rebbe continues that American youth have been brought up on the foundation of personal glorification. Per, I am smart. I am brilliant. I know best. So the whole concept which is so important for a good society, which is a form of loyalty, a dedication, a submission. And the basis of Yiddishkeit, Kabbalah Sal Malchus Shamayim, I'm here to serve Hashem, accepting the yoke of the kingdom of heaven, has been severely compromised. How do you deal with that? So the Rebbe said he thought long and hard, not to look at the symptoms, but to get to the core. How do we go back to the core to inculcate these ideas into children, but without coercion, without forcing them. Because that would defeat the purpose, because they would reject that too. In other words, Kabbalah soil itself has to be something that they can really appreciate. How do we do that? How do we make it exciting? The Rebbe has an expression in the letter. I came to the conclusion that there's no other way than trying to affect a basic change in the nature of children through a system of discipline and obedience to rules which she or he can be induced to get accustomed to. Moreover, for this method to be effective, it would be necessary that it should be freely and readily accepted without coercion. Wow. So the Rebbe felt that the best way to do this is by introducing the concept of Kabbalah cells through something that would be exciting to children, meaningful to children. Hashem is the commander-in-chief. We are all part of a tremendous mission to change the world, to liberate the world, to bring Geula to the world, to defeat Ra, to bring in Toiv, and in our personal lives, to affect the victory of the Yetzir Toiv over the Yetzirah, which ultimately, by osmosis, affects our communities and our neighborhoods and our cities and our countries, our states, our continents, and ultimately the whole world. Coronavirus, a little sneeze, or touching a nor button, doorknob can shut down the whole world. So create a system 
that introduces almost through the back door these concepts, these Yisoides of Kabbalah's El, Malchus Shemaim. Yes, you're in an army. Yes, you have a commander. Yes, there is the order of the day. Yes, there is the war that we're fighting in this era. Yes, there is what the enemy wants and there is what you want. Yes, you can't fall asleep on the job. All of these Yisoides of Kabbalah's El, which are essential for a child and for an adult to be able to function as a good person, as a good American, and certainly as a good Jew. Point number one. Point number two, you could say is prophetic. And that is that Rebbe speaks about the lack of safety in schools, the gangs, the levels of crime, the fact that in previous generations and years in America was unheard of, that schools should be such unsafe places, that you need metal detectors, that there is so much violence, especially the youth are watching, I'm adding this, the youth watching shows in TV, movies, video games, etc., that sometimes glorify violence. And especially for young boys, also for young girls, but especially for young boys who are aggressive by nature, especially if you're aggressive, this can literally feed sharks and monsters in the child that can be very dangerous. The Rebbe has an expression here in the letter. The Tzivis Hashem campaign has a further reward, though not widely applicable to Jewish children attending Hebrew schools, because they grew up, they grew up in a more moral environment. The Chachamim taught us in Shabbos, Daf Kuf Nun Vav, that somebody who's born with a violent nature, he should become a physician, a bloodletting physician, a shaykhet, a male, to give a positive outlet to his strong natural propensity. Children that might be inclined to aggressiveness and hence easy candidates for street gangs and the like would have a positive outlet by diverting their energy in the right direction. Wow. So let's think about this. There is so much violence today in schools. The shootings recently, or not just in schools, in other places. Kids don't have the same values. So those who grew up in nice homes and they're not aggressive by nature, okay, most of them are fine. But we have this tendency, and there is this danger. There's domestic abuse in homes, and all other types of abuse. So the Rebbe is telling us, those kids will desperately need and gain from an outlet, a positive outlet. Teach them, yes, fight. Fight the Sahara. Yes, you're in an army. Be aggressive. Be aggressive against evil. In other words, take that passion. Take that bloody, that, that hot-blooded personality type. Take that aggressiveness. Take that lebedikite. And channel it. You can't obliterate it. You can't destroy it. It's a beautiful shot from the Vilna Gon. He says you have to take his derech and harness it. Utilize it in the proper way. It says about David that he was red. He was red, hot-blooded like Esau. Esau is Edom and David is Edom. But the difference is Esau is Heirig without Sanhedrin. And David utilizes it to build a moral world. It's not for Hefker. So this idea of Tzivis Hashem is a whole other idea which really takes something that is so prevalent today, which is violence, which is aggression. People see in a lot of, a lot of kids see in a lot of shows and movies and video games and really give this an outlet in Kedusha, in Torah and Mitzvahs. And then there's number three. Number three, what Tzivus Hashem does is it teaches us that there is a war going on. And the main war that's going on is inside my heart. We could say, you know, yeah, let's just talk about peace. What's the danger? The danger is you're ignoring war. Just like politically or militarily, if there's a country in war, and we say we're going to be pacifists, we're going to make believe there's no war. The problem is there is a war, and you're going to die. Innocent people are going to die. You have to fight. So the Rebbe says, here is where Tzivis Hashem comes in. There is a war going on. You know what the biggest war has happened? The biggest war that is going on, where it is? It's in my heart. It's in your heart. We have traumas. We have pains, we're broken, we have insecurities, we have fears. And because of that, we can often revert to our reptile brain, revert to our limbic brain, and operate from a very, very primitive fashion. The Rebbe points out there that lechem comes from the word milchama, because every time I eat, I can either be an animal or a human being. 
either I eat like an animal, I'm a glutton, or I'm an elevated person. But it's true in everything in life. That war is constantly going on. When I'm married, I have struggles in terms of being a husband or a wife, in terms of being a father or a mother. Whatever stage in life you are, the biggest battles you have to wage and the greatest challenges you have to confront are the inner challenges. The Chavis Alavavis writes that there was a man, a great warrior, who came back from war, he defeated his enemies, and a great sage came to greet him, and he said, now that you've finished the small war, you're ready to begin the big war. And he said, what's the big war? He said, the big war is inside here. Tzivis Hashem inculcates in me the idea that in life I have to battle instincts, cravings, brokenness, traumas, insecurities, pains, yetzer horrors, all types of proclivities, propensities, uh, inclinations, instincts, addictions that will harm me if I don't control them, if I don't defeat them, if I don't subdue them, if I don't confront them, if I don't subjugate them, if I don't deal with them, if I don't transform them, if I don't understand them, if I don't quarantine them, if I don't identify them. I have to create space for them. I have to realize there is lechem elashem elchama, shat sloyser shas kravet, says in Zayar. Time of davening is a time of war. Lechem elchama, time of eating is a time of war. Yes, every time I open the pantry, there's a war going on. Am I going to align myself with my inner infinite nature that is aligned with divinity? Or am I going to revert back to my inner, um, my inner limbic brain, what they call reptilian brain? Obviously, they never won't use that word for obvious reasons. But basically, the limbic brain, which is based on flight or flight, the amygdala of the brain, which is not doesn't have the ability of the prefrontal cortex to develop vision, what you may call in Tanya's tem- terminology, Nefesh Abahamas. I basically live by the reptile inside of me or the animal inside of me without the ability to open myself up to the divinity that flows through me. That is a constant choice. We have to teach children about these choices. We have to help them breathe in these choices, help them make these choices on a daily basis. That's what Sivas Hashem focuses on. It focuses on the wars that exist inside of us and our ability to vanquish those sides that limit us, that shrink us, that, that enslave us, that subjugate us and keep us hostage to our amygdala rather than allowing us to see the bigger picture of our lives and live life from a much deeper and more wholesome and divine and happier place. This too is what Sivis Hashem accomplishes. The Rebbe concludes the letter that he hopes that all Jews outside of Lubavitch will adopt and embrace in their schools and homes the programs of Sivis Hashem and I hope this will be happening now. That this vision of Tzivus Hashem and everything it entails, it's something that we haven't even fully developed yet, something that we haven't fully harnessed yet. It has within it a potential to really change our youth, to really uh, inspire our youth, um, following these guidelines and really being creative with it and realizing what's inside it. It can, it can really uh, help so many of our youth, but we have to be excited about it. We have to realize what it really is, not just you know robotic, to, to go about it in a robotic way. Mm. Really appreciate its potency, its potency articulated in this letter, not to deal with symptoms, but to deal with causes, to be able to go into those cause, go into the root issues, and really help children discover their true inner holiness and their true inner divine power. Thank you very much. May it be with tremendous, tremendous hatzlocha, bracha, ad blidai.